All right, so with this podcast, I guess we're just going to go like back and forth. Like, I'll ask you some questions about your process, and then uh, I'll answer some questions about, you know, anything really. Okay, And cool. then we just go from there. Um, so, yeah, first off, like, what, like, got you into the arts? Like, have you always been, you know, uh, drawing? And, yeah, so how did, how did that come about? Um, yeah, I've been drawing since I was, like, very, very little, like, not to go on, like, a tangent, I guess, but, like, um, I was, like, like, four or something, and, like, my mom, like, (laughs) I, like, drew this picture of, like, Spongebob, and she was just, like, wow, like, that looks exactly like him, and so, like, I guess, like, getting that kind of, like, uh, like, affirmation was just, like, like, oh, like, I'm gonna continue doing this, and I just kind of, like, went from there, and everything just evolved. From there you know like it's interesting because uh my family they're very creative yeah. but not in like a, a visual sort of way okay. it's more in like a musical and writing so ever since i was like younger like my mom and like my sister they would always like tell me like stories they like make up like random stories that are just like completely <laughs> like not based in reality right. <laughs> or like sometimes they were i guess but um I realized that like as I got older and like I started to like draw more that I was kind of doing like the same thing in a way but visually you know instead of using like my words I was telling stories through like pictures nice. yeah. so it wasn't like a like a certain year like in high school where like you know you got like positive feedback from a teacher and then you know you just like constantly like um, fell in love with it it was just kind of like you were just doing it like from a young age and just never stopped. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or like, I actually now that I'm thinking about it a little bit, when I was in like elementary school, I had this teacher's assistant that, like, she would like see me like drawing all the time, and she was just like, like, don't stop. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, huh, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't stop because I'm really enjoying this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that 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 definitely helped like push me along you know yeah it's always nice when you get like a, a teacher that gives you like positive feedback that's like not just like you know your average like oh wow like this is nice but like actually personal like you know you got someone going there and then like you know you know you feel a little special um but yeah that's that's sweet i think for me it was more so just like like the arts like, were something i was interested in but i never like took like seriously uh until like college when I was like wow like this is like like the place that I feel like at home with you know when I'm in the studio um not much like made sense to me like other classes where like you know struggle to like you know do well in but like art always was like there for me so it was kind of an outlet more than anything else and yeah now that I'm like you know, finding my way, um, like pursuing it and like putting myself out there and like exhibits and whatnot. Um, I'm just like really grateful to have like, you know, found like community of like other artists in the area who are doing the same thing or similar things. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, it's like seeing your process evolve is like, just as exciting as like seeing mine because it's like what like you kind of like see like person our personalities and same thing with like emily teal like you know you're kind of her um you can like you know see where her interests and her art are like converging and yeah but like i hope that like we can like all grow together is what i'm trying to say and so that that would be really sweet um yeah that's, that's kind of what like the North Art Space is for, I think, um, like cultivating this like beautiful like community that's that's rare to be honest. Like um, a lot of other like places are, I feel more um, more about like the institution, like in getting in and then like getting out so you can like be like a successful. Um, like find success in like a um, industry or like with a position or um, you know 
this is more so just like community work almost. Yeah, yeah. experimenting, evolving, yeah. Uh, developing. So yeah. Yeah, I can I can definitely like see that here because like I I've been to like other like art centers I guess like um, I'm not gonna like name them but like um, I had been there and it didn't feel like like this place for me like I guess feels like home because there are people here that I actually like enjoy talking to and will have like long conversations with about you know like our uh, our interests that are aligned you know and we all just kind of like what's the word I'm looking for like we all inspire each other because yeah it's not there's not like just one art style here either it's everything is so different so I feel like you know when we're all like talking together we're kind of like taking you know different processes or like different like ideas from each other and using it in like our own ways and i think that's that's really special yeah i think that's like unique to the artist perspective because when i came here like i i started like learning to view art as a learner as opposed to like if I would go into a museum, I would be like, you know, impressed or like trying to be impressed by by a piece of art. Whereas here, I'm like, oh, I'm like, you know, look at this like person's style, like, you know, or like look at this like subject matter, and like I'll like look his work up even further, and like I see how like he his um he's really like driving like a point home that's like, you know, different than what. I've seen or studied from artists in the past. Um, so yeah, it's like that give and take uh, like theme here in the Norgard space. So yeah, what are, what are you working on today? I see you got a, a block of wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess I'm kind of making like a series okay. almost just because I have another block of wood right there. <laughs> And it's, it's like the same size, same vibe almost that I'm going for. Um, it's really funny because like these blocks of woods started from like being here. Yeah. Like uh, it was during Deviant's exhibit. Did you see it? It was like very early in like, uh, like last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think I did. He had like this gigantic like wooden panel on yeah. the wall. But it was like carved into it, it wasn't like painted. It was like, it kind of felt like you can kind of probably make like a print with it if you like put ink on it or something. It was like carved into, and it was like right next to the front desk where I usually sit. And so I was like, I would just like stare at it like every time I was like <laughs> there during the weekend. I'm just like, why and how did he do that? Yeah. And so, like, I still don't know how, <laughs> but, um, I guess I was like, I want to work with wood too, and so I got these like, these like blocks, and I decided to start doing like pyrography, and so this is gonna get like pyro py pyrography. pyrography. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah. hard to pronounce, but <laughs> yeah, it's like um, pretty basically you're like burning something like into the woods. So oh, like okay. Yeah, and so it has like, well, it's while you're like engraving something into it, it has like this darker okay. effect that goes into it, and you can like use it, you kind of like play with the values and okay. it look like that. And uh, so that's what I did with that one over there. And um, I'm gonna be doing the same thing here, but going just a little bit deeper. Wait, like can, I, can I pick up that one? Oh, yeah, sure, go for it. I didn't even realize this was. Um like carved really um yeah. this is what it looks like <laughs> and that block goes back into what i was saying about storytelling yeah. too because it's that's what it is the story's like a comic book but I'm yeah like, there's like a, a scene in each one mm -hmm. and each side is like covered including like the top and bottom do you put resin on this no, I am. Okay. It, you're probably wondering why it's a little sticky. Yeah, yeah it's, a little sticky. <laughs> it's it's dry, but um, nice. something that I just learned about wood recently is that apparently it's like it starts to seep sap <laughs> when you like didn't um, I guess kind of 
and so I oh, have okay. it. So that's why it's a little sticky, but it, um Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I mean it's like invisible to the viewer, so oh, sure. um but yeah, that's really cool. And And this is for the exhibit that's coming up for um, the uh, resident artist. Teachers, yeah. yeah. Um, so I did have this one in the first Open exhibit that exhibits, I was here. Yeah. yeah. And so I wanted to like have these two together by like the end one because I feel like it's kind of just like it's full circle, you know? Yeah. yeah. Go for it, man. That's awesome. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, any other questions or um, uh, thoughts? Maybe like in this, or like so you're you're in college right now, right? Technically, <laughs> it's it's complicated. I guess I'm picking okay. like one class, but uh, I'm planning on like transferring to like uh, a bigger like art school. Okay. Yeah. What advice do you have for aspiring artists? I guess young artists. Hmm. Or all artists, too, yeah, because all the people can get into the art making. Yeah, yeah. Very, very well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I would just say, like, keep going. Everything is like a learning process. Yeah. Try everything. Because, I don't know, I kind of feel like. In terms of saying? mediums. Yeah, yeah, in terms of mediums, yeah. I would say try everything. I would definitely say that. Because. Being a jack of all trades is not so bad. You kind of like, you kind of like take something from every medium and kind of like combine that over time. But yeah. I would just say like, like keep going. Like if you love to like do something, just like go for it. You know, if you have like that hunger, like do it because you're never gonna be able to scratch that itch unless you do it. You know. Yeah, I would say like similar, similarly, like. Like the interesting part of art happens outside of the um, the class when you're an art student or studying art in college, it's or high school. Um, it can definitely be like more of a self discovery process, uh, whereas like in class, of course, it's going to be more technical um, and involved uh, from a you know teacher to um you know pupil perspective he's kind of he, he or she or they is going to impress upon like their knowledge to to create something that uh is in alignment with like what they're teaching and but you can do so much you can take that like so much further when you're alone in your room and or just like in your own zone and letting like your subconscious like flow onto the page or whatever medium you're working on so yeah and and that brings me to another thought to be honest because like i learned way more on my own than being in school i feel like because when i had gone to like you know the art department at ncc or whatever like it was great because you know you're working alongside other people and you can get inspired by the people that are around you definitely but i feel like um before I went to to college and was like I had like a gap year. Yeah. Um, I realized that my creativity was the strongest then because I had that time alone. I had that time to go off on my own little adventures yeah. and get inspired from like life experiences rather than sitting in the classroom that's very structured and not always allowing you to do what right. you want to do. You know. And to go like off that, like sometimes it's not that the professor isn't what what, what they're teaching you isn't uh, like correct or right. It's just that like it just doesn't re it may may not resonate with you, and you can kind of teach yourself or like look at another person's style and like learn and be inspired from their work and apply that to your own practice and just like you know evolve so much further because that there you just see their technique and you're able to apply that to your own work so I just I that's lately what I've been doing um, 
and I just in my file like you know if you just study you know other people's work it's the same as like you know a teacher being like hey like you know look at this line or like look at this you know, look at the way they apply in the paint it's the same as like a a teacher demonstrating that truth essentially yes yes and like even to like go off of that like I'm happy to be living in the time of the internet <laughs> because that's how I got like that's how I got like like all of like the knowledge that I yeah. have like YouTube YouTube was like my biggest thing I would go on YouTube and I would start searching up like uh like things that I was interested in yeah. that like may not have been taught in like an art class like I'll look at like animators on YouTube. How do yep. they animate? How do they do character designs? Or uh, you know, how do you use like wash paint or and, and stuff like that? Like, I feel like, you know, like that's what I I did during my gap year. Basically, I was just kind of like at home, just like on YouTube, like just gaining like the knowledge that yeah. interested me particularly. You know, but yeah, I feel like. Like school, school is good and fun, and if you yeah. want to do that, then like do whatever your heart desires, you yeah. know. But I feel like outside of that, it's it's a lot of fun in it, you know. Yeah, yeah. The last thing I want to say is like, um, so like when you're out of college, like and making art and like putting it out there into the world, uh. It can feel like a sport in a sense where it gets like you know competitive and like there is um, a, a monetary uh, metric <laughs> that you're aware of um, in terms of like sales like you know gallery if you want gallery representation like they'll ask you about your sales and whatnot and uh, you want to keep that in your like vision if that if that's what you want, ultimately want is to be represented by a gallery you want to go down and pursue the route of becoming like a fine artist who sells their work in a gallery um so yeah just be like realistic there are like financial um constraints i guess just uh, so to speak to like being a uh, artist and starting out on that process but that like if you make it all about like oh like you know they they're they're only taking like um, you know this type of art and it can make you feel cynical mm -hmm. uh, so yeah just definitely like keep everything in perspective and that's the healthiest way that I feel like you can go about it. That's a good point. Definitely like. Uh... I, I have started to notice that like certain galleries will only take like landscapes and like you know pretty like portraiture and they don't kind of like move away from like different styles and you know that's okay if they're trying to like pursue like a brand you know but there there will be places that uh, like do that do kind of like strike and are interested in like multiple types of artworks but yeah um what you were saying about like uh, like sales and and all of that that's that's a very good point because i do notice that like a lot of artists they do have like second jobs and it's like it's not sad per se because we all of course have to support ourselves and yeah. our families even but it's like i guess i wish that the art community was more valued and that speaks on like any type of art you know not just like visuals but also like musicians and like uh just creative minds in general i feel like we there's better be better way <laughs> yeah no and and there are like you know there's you know artist residencies that do help support artists of course but even that, you know, it, it only can apply to so many artists, you know, it only can help so many of the, you know, hundreds, if not thousands um, of artists that are out there. Um, 
we're pursuing like you know a a living uh, in as a fine artist. Um, yeah, so like I'm like I'm pursuing a master's right now in social work to become an art therapist, and part of that is because I'm like psyched to be a art therapist and like help people in the mental health field. But another part of that is like after graduating college with a studio art degree, uh, I didn't want to go down the route of graphic design. Uh, I'm also a part-time uh, head coach of cross country and assistant coach for track. Um, but that, you know, is, is enough to make a living. So there, there is like financial realities to keep in mind as well. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Uh, yeah, they're definitely. Oh, sorry, we were like, oh, never mind, or whatever. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Black Alley. Black Alley. Um, like, are people still looking for I totally lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, I know. Um, art positions. There, there are definitely ways. I, I guess I was thinking, like, in the sense of like freelancing. I feel like freelancing is like a little bit hard, but like you said, like. Uh, therapy that's a really yeah. good one to make money there's also like there is money in graphic design and in animation um uh even just like like clothing design and stuff like that i feel like there's there is money and that there is a way to to make money but i guess you just kind of kind of like find what works for you and i feel like i don't know i just really love the idea of art therapy too because like yeah. You're not only are you like helping other people, which is there's like a joy in that in itself, but you know, you're also doing something that you love. Yeah, like the, the idea, I guess, would be to give, teach them a skill, like a uh, coping skill, you know, um, you know, people have, and also it, it, you know, addresses certain traumas. Um, but I'm not gonna like dive into that too much, I'm still like learning about that. Um, but yeah, like you said, like there are services that you can offer, like being a uh, photographer or videographer, yeah. um, to to balance out or to like do that uh, to supplement your um, fine art income. Um, but fine art is definitely like you're like an entrepreneur at that point, like you're putting out a product into the world mm -hmm. and. Um, the customers, or I guess like the marketplace, is uh, you know either going to pay for that or decide not to, and yeah, it can be it can be rough when you start out, but I think I feel like for like fine artists like or like fine artists that are just like starting out, I feel like taking like a business class is like a good idea because it's like you you are doing business, you yeah. you are putting out like a product exactly. essentially, so it's like having that background knowledge yeah. of like you know having like economics right yeah yeah mm -hmm. i yeah. feel like that's that's a good idea yeah yeah but you know still like have fun like i hear from artists all the time i was just at a art art artist talk at the normal art space um from the current uh exhibitors and they were saying how like important it is to have fun in the process because really like this is at the end of the day like it's just like it's making art you know it's it should be fun it should be emotional too uh and you know you're putting yourself out there in the form of art but if you like take your mind out of that too much out of that space too much it just won't be fun yeah you gotta have that balance yeah you know yeah all right, well, that's it. <laughs>